welcome to a new episode. Today, me and Ella will be continue exploring the career options available for graduates of the Bachelor of Health Sciences program at Queens. Last week, we talked about public health, education, research, and also occupational therapists. And this week, we are going to be covering medicine, dentistry, heated professional healthcare degrees. So let's get started. I've also realized that recently we've been getting less views than we used to. So really, we created this um, channel and this those videos for your liking. So tell us, comment down below, or send me a direct message what content you guys would like to see. Because honestly, we made those videos and this channel just for you guys. So we really want you guys to enjoy the things that we post. So don't be afraid to reach out. We're really happy to hear from you. So the first one that we're going to be talking about today is dentistry. There's many different careers in the field of dentistry. There is a dentist, dental hygienist, and also dental assistant. In this video, we will only be covering dentists because both dental hygienist and dental assistant actually go through a completely different education path than um, dentist does. And I feel like the Bachelor of Health Sciences program is more of an undergraduate degree that prepares you for a dentist career path. So we won't be covering the other two. So dentists are doctors of the oral region. They don't just deal with teeth, but also deal with illnesses and diseases in the gum and the mouth region. Most dentists are self-employed. They have their own practices and work full time. They also hire their own dental hygienist and dental assistant and provide them with benefits. The average salary for a dentist is 116k in Canada. An insane amount. Entry level salary is only about 39,000 a year. In order to become a dentist, you have to complete the dentist aptitude test in order to apply for dental school. You also have to submit your CV and other supplementary materials required. You can apply to other dentist school in order to work in Canada in the future. You can apply to dentist school in Canada and also in the States, in the Caribbean and elsewhere. Here are the list of Canadian dental schools. You must have completed two years of undergraduate programs at least to apply for those professional programs. The course requirement to apply usually differs from school to school, so I would suggest you to look up and research your own specific school or program of interest. Dental school takes a minimum for four to five years to complete. It is very competitive, similar to med school. You have to have a really good GPA. The first two years are in classroom settings, and the second two years are in clinical settings. For specialization in dentistry, residency is required after dental school. It's usually two years, and there's nine different dental specialties in Canada. To become a dentist in Canada, you must also pass the examination through the National Dentist Examining Board of Canada. Once passed, you can practice dentistry in different settings such as the hospital or in your private clinics. To fund for your dental school tuition, there is scholarship, there's awards, there's bursary, and also provincial federal student loan that can help. So that's all we got for dentistry. Move on, we will be talking about medicine. I believe that this is definitely a really popular career for a Bachelor of Health Sciences student. Um, I think many of you have heard Definitely uh, most of the population in our program wants to go to medical school. So basically most people who go into medicine after undergrad are pursuing a career um, as a surgeon or as a physician. There's also people who wants to become a physician assistant, which is a job that's more popular in the US. Physician and surgeons, many of you guys already know, their job is to diagnose and treat different injuries and diseases in lots of different specialties. Here's a wonderful list. Um, there's definitely one that you are interested in. Their schedule including performing calls, conducting surgeries, working in outpatient clinics, consultation with patients, consultations with other services, and inpatient wards. 
They manage and oversee staff in their personal clinics. They have a great liability over care of their patients. To become a physician or a surgeon, you have to attend medical school. You can attend medical school in Canada, and although it's really competitive, you can attend medical school in the States. And there's also international school, like schools in the Caribbean. However, according to data from Canadian Residence Matching Service, it is harder for international medical school students to get a placement in Canada. So I think that's something that you should research about. There's four criteria to get into med school. High MCAT score, which we'll talk about later. There is high GPA. There is a rich extracurricular and also a good interview. So I mentioned the word MCAT. I'm sure many of you guys are familiar with this. MCAT stands for Medical College Admission Test. It has four different sections, biology and biochem, chemistry and physics, psychology and sociology, critical analysis and reasoning skills. You can also write it multiple times. Most people take the MCAT the year before they apply. Most people apply for medical school in the beginning of your fourth year and will receive your acceptances around May. For those of you who want to become physicians and surgeons, I actually won't be going to too much in detail with MCAT in this video because I know there's a lot of good videos out there that tells you what is MCAT like, how do you get a good score on MCAT, I'm sure that all of you guys are familiar with it. If you guys are not, I can definitely make a video suggesting the good sources and the channels that I found helpful. And if you guys want to see that, comment down below. I will make sure to make a video on that. Medical school is usually four years and uh, most medical school have first a foundational science phase and then the clinical phase. The first phase is two years and the second phase is two years. So in the first phase, you learn about the basic sciences and the clinical knowledge in the classroom setting. And then the second phase, you will be seeing physicians and going to clinical settings to apply hands-on knowledge. It's also called the clerkship phase. In addition to medical school, to become a doctor in Canada, you also have to pass the Canadian licensing exam, which is the Medical Council of Canada Qualifying Examination, also called NCCQE. People usually complete that in their final years of medical school or their first year of residency. After they have completed that, they become an official licensee of the Medical Council of Canada. After your fourth year of medical school, you will be matched into your residency program using the Canadian Resident Matching Service, also called CARMS. The application also starts in your fourth year of medical school. Residents also have to take an additional board examination to start their practice. Upon completion of that, you are eligible for unsupervised practice. Again, there's lots of video on YouTube that goes really in depth with that. I would highly suggest you, if you want to become a doctor, do your own research on YouTube. There are so many helpful resources, so many people shared about their past experiences. I am strongly empowered by everything they share and I have a lot of people that I really look up to. If you guys want to become a physician, a doctor, a surgeon, definitely take advantage of the good sources out there in this information era. Based on the report form from the Canadian Institute of Health, a physician or surgeon makes about 260000 to 714000 per year depending on their specialty. The average is 339000 per year. So definitely there's more doctor who makes around the 200 to 500 spectrum than the 700. And it's also important to know that this is an average salary for experience level. For entry level, it's usually way less. Finally done talking about physicians and surgeons, let's move on to physician assistant. I've actually watched a lot of YouTube videos about that from the States. Like it's such a popular job in the state. It takes less year of education for you to be a physician assistant. I'm not sure how popular the job is in Canada, but I do think they have an official website about that, the Canada PA website. That I sourced a lot of information from. So um, I would just here try my best to talk to you about what this job is about. For to become a physician assistant in Canada, you have to be either Canada or US trained. And just like doctors, you have to go through a PA school, a physician assistant school, which actually have the same education model. They're both using the medical model for their education. They do 80 to 90% of what a physician and a surgeon does. 
They often handle less acute situations. Their main purpose is to lessen the workloads of the physicians slash their supervisor. So therefore, the tasks they do really depending on the scope of the physicians. It must be delegated by the physician and if a physician normally does not perform the task, the physician assistant cannot be performing the task. It is said that they work autonomously, but they are not independent practitioners and they have a really particular relationship with their supervising physicians. For example, some physician assistant only speak to their supervisors when there is a different or urgent case or if there's any concerns, but some sees patient alongside with the supervisor every single case. They can both found in a hospital and non-hospital setting. Many would say that they have more work flexibility than physicians, especially in the hospital settings because they usually work less hours and they are not required to be on call. They can negotiate leaves, they can enjoy employee benefits because they are employed. Unlike doctor, they don't work with the business side of medicine because they don't have their own practice. They also have more career flexibility. They can easily change between specialties if they want. They don't have to go through extra years of schooling like the doctors. And sometimes physician assistant works on both specialties. For example, they work two days as a cardiology physician assistant and then three days in the week as an orthopedic physician assistant. So basically you can work on two specialties at once. How do you become a physician assistant slash PA? Um, so there's only four accredited universities in Canada. So only four PA schools. It's usually a two-year program and do not require any residency after you graduate from physician school. So much less student loan. So the first year of their PA school is usually classroom setting and the second year is going to be clinical setting slash clinical rotations. The admission requirements are you have to be a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident. You have to have at least two to four years of undergrad, minimum of 3.0 GPA, definitely higher, go higher if you can. Supporting documents such as letter of recommendations. Some have specific course requirements in anatomy, physiology, pharmacology. Running out of fingers, running out of fingers. Um, also good interview. <laughs> Also, after you complete a PA school, you have to write a PA entry exam issued by the Physician Assistant Certification Council of Canada. And you will receive a designation after you successfully pass the exam. So a physician assistant definitely gets paid less comparing to a doctor. 75000 to 85000 that's the Canadian average. I've linked a lot of resources in the introduction of this video if you guys want to check it out. If you guys want to become a doctor or a, a physician assistant, I really think those resources will benefit you. It's really important that you know the steps and definitely prepare yourself beforehand, not until your third year and fourth year. That's all I got for you today in terms of dentistry and medicine. Let's pass the stage to Ella. I go. So this is the end for this episode. We thought about wrapping everything up in this episode, but nope, there is more. We will be making a third episode disclosing the career that's not mentioned on the Bachelor of Health Sciences website. Okay, so Ella, so far, which career is your favorite career? Probably OT, because I'm thinking about it. Yeah, she's just thinking about it, dreaming about it. I'm so hungry. <laughs> okay, so, um, so... It's dinner time, but we're... This ending is so boring. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, so thank you guys for watching the video. Um, lots of education for you guys this summer. I want you guys all to be educated for your future. Yeah, career. please Big comment below. It. Please comment down below. Be please tell comment down below and tell us how you think. And, um, what you think. And what do you want to hear from us? Because we don't want to make things that you guys don't want to watch or just like lecturing you guys. Anything that is appropriate, we can do. What fun things do you want to see? Like, do you want to see some vlogs too about our life? Which, our lives are pretty boring right now, especially for me. Yeah, just for her. I mean, yours too. <laughs> no, my life is full of colors. I mean, if you guys want to see us walking around Kingston or something like that, we can definitely do that too. Yeah, a life in Kingston. 
But they're in Kingston. Yeah, in front of Domino's. We need to go eat dinner, so bye. Bye. Thank you guys for watching the video.